and uh, call this March 10th meeting of the Rules and Resolutions Committee and Ethics Board to order. So we have, um, and, and thanks everyone for meeting online. Um, I, I mentioned in the email that I'm, I'm sick right now and it probably wouldn't have been a very pretty scene had I been in the county boardroom because I got a lot of, my nose is running quite a bit. So um, I did hear from Mr. Seep that he's, uh, he had an appointment come up unexpectedly this afternoon. He's going to try to join us if he can remotely. He was going to see if he could also change his appointment, but I don't know the status of that. So I just wanted to let folks know, but we do have a quorum, so we can conduct our business. Agenda item number uh, two, proof of notification. Uh, the meeting was properly notified and it was also posted in the uh, courthouse in the downstairs hallway. Um, Agenda item number three, agenda approval. So on this one, I did have an agenda item on there for uh, before I sent this version out for a closed session so we could discuss the bid process complaint. However, once I found out I was sick, uh, doing a closed session online is a little challenging. So I pulled that off. And now that Mr. Seep isn't able to be here as well, it uh, looks like another reason maybe it was good to not have that on here, but I just wanted to let everyone know that that um, that got pulled off the agenda for those reasons. But but of course, um, I anticipate that will be on a future agenda item under our ethics board responsibilities. So looking for a motion to approve the 11 point agenda as it is. It'll move. Gary seconds. Okay, um, so motion by Cosgrove and a second by Severson. Any discussion on the agenda? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those say no. Okay, that motion carries. Agenda item number four, previous meeting minutes. Looking for a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion by Luck, second by Severson. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Those say no. Okay, that motion carries. We have approved minutes. Agenda item number five, public comments. Topics raised and comments received from the public may be placed on a future agenda for consideration. Is there anyone from the public who wants to make comment to the committee? Sean. This okay, is Lee Van Lander. had a hard time unmuting themselves. Just in, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just a quickie. I have nothing to say at this time, but maybe during the course of the meeting, since I chair the Veterans Committee, I might like to make some comments at that time, if I may. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we invite feedback on the individual items, too. This is just kind of a catch-all item in case someone has something not on our topic and, uh, I'm sorry, not on our agenda, and they want to... Yeah. Um, voice their opinion. Okay, all is well. Thank you. Hi, Sean. It's Linda. I don't think I have any comments. I'm just listening. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Well, there'll be opportunity to to talk on item six through nine. So glad glad you're here. Glad everyone's here. Okay. I'm um, hearing no public Hi, comments. Hi, Marty. I'm joining by phone. Okay. Great. Glad you're here as well. And I see we've got um, also Supervisor Glassbrenner, Supervisor Caro. Those are the other supervisors I see. Okay, uh, let's move on to agenda item number six, County Board Rules Draft Update. So actually for items six, seven, eight, and nine, I wanted to know from the committee how you wanted to hear about all these. I didn't prepare any cover sheets. Uh, I didn't prepare any motions because I just wanted to make sure that you all had the documents. Um, I'm happy with agenda item number nine. I don't know that this is going to the, to the county board um, at this month's meeting or at any future meeting, but I did draft a presentation with the 
potential that it would go to the county board. Just trying to summarize all this work that we've been doing over the past six months, and then also to pick up from where we left off at our last meeting. So I just wanted to know from the committee, I, I'm thinking it might be best to go through either all or part of that presentation first, just to remind ourselves where we're at, but I'm, I'm open to, to whatever the committee would like to do. The documents are pretty, there's a lot of changes in them. And, and so that's why I created the presentation just to summarize everything. I think going through the presentation is not a bad idea. Um, I think if we do decide to move forward, having heard the presentation may help us kind of streamline our thoughts too, as far as where we're at on all of it. Okay. What about the other two committee members? Yeah, I'm fine with that as well. I, I'm not sure if you remember, but I had to leave early the last meeting, so I wasn't there for the final thoughts and et cetera. That's right. Good point. Mr. Chairman. Oh, Mr. Seep, you're here. Great. Present. Excellent. I was just asking the committee if they wanted to go through the presentation and does anyone else object to going through that and the whole thing or just part of it? I, I guess I didn't ask for that part of the opinion. What is, what is I mean, the rest? Think, you don't have to spend a ton of time on the beginning of it, you know, but I think it's worth going through page by page. Okay. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Severson, do you have any opinions? You're done. Okay. Let's get going then. Um, so if. I think it's Mr. Langreck just put up the presentation. If you just want to pull that back up, and we'll just walk through it slide by slide here. And I've got my laptop. I'm going to go ahead and just start going on on slide number two. We we kind of started this whole process back in October uh, with a proposal by the administrator to have the county board chair appoint three members of the five member committee on committees. So reducing it from seven to five. And then the other piece of it was to categorize all bodies into those different five sub bullets. And then also to have the county board chair appoint chairs of standing committees. So the main justification for it at, at the time that, that we discussed was streamlining county services through the establishment of a cabinet of the county board <coughs> of the county board chair rather and the action we took was to forward that informational proposal to the county board to inform the whole county board and to invite feedback <clears throat> so then in november we reviewed county board feedback the main thing we heard from a few people was that it seemed to be less democratic we discussed again the justification for the change and, and kind of expanded on the, the justification in October, um, creating more cohesion to lead us through challenging finances, and then um, basically through consolidation of different services or functions of the county, and then also to allow committees to be appointed at the organizational meeting for efficiency, and, and right now that happens uh, typically in May, the organizational meetings in April. <clears throat> there was also some interest in having the county board chair and vice chair candidates submit their resumes uh, before their election. And we had a good amount of healthy discussion and debate over the structure of the county board. So um, on the next slide in December, we began discussing that process for running for county board chair and vice chair, and then also orientation for uh, new county board members or re-elected ones. And then we took action on several different items there. Um, one, to encourage county board members to attend an educational webinar series by the counties association, one of which included committee structure. 
<clears throat> and right sizing. Um, we authorize researching how bodies pay departmental bills and monitor annual spending. And then we reviewed research on how other counties appoint their county board members, and we recommended those four bullet points at the bottom there. Um, and I'll go ahead and just walk through each one of them. Um, on the, yeah, that, that next slide is great. So we looked only at peer counties that had a similar population and administrator form of government. So the first question was who should appoint um, members of sub bodies of the county board and specifically county board members. Um, most counties that we looked at their county board chair appoints those members. Um, I believe there's one exception and that was Iowa County and they have a committee on appointments, but all the others did the county board chair with county board confirmation required typically. The second thing we looked at was when are they making the appointments? Are they doing it in April or in May after the election? And it was about half and half. So the committee in December, the rules committee made the recommendation to have it take place in April at the organizational meeting so we could keep moving on our um, different committees and, and keep the work going of the county board. Then the third question uh, was related to removal of members of sub bodies. So it varies quite a bit. And this was a recommendation from the counties association that we make it real clear how removals would happen. And what we recommended was that the county board chair recommend removals, but give the option for, and, and this by the way, isn't for removals from the entire county board. It's just um, to committees, commissions, and boards that they're appointed to. Um, so we recommended that the county board chair bring that recommendation to the county board if they wish to do that, but give the option for um, that person to submit their resignation beforehand if they wanted to do that. And it would still have to go through county board confirmation. And then the fourth point was what we found in other counties is that these sub bodies or these other committees, they usually select their chairs. So in this case, we um, we took a different route than, than what Mr. Langrec recommended to us in October, and we recommended um, that committees select their own chairs. So then in January, we took the following actions. Um, we gave actions to develop a list of required and optional responsibilities for the chair and vice chair. We took action to have sub bodies monitor the actual versus approved annual budget in, um, in their committees on a quarterly basis. We recommended a seven step process for running for county board chair and vice chair. <coughs> and then we recommended drafting options for restructuring committees to improve efficiency and accountability. So we kind of took, we picked back up what Clint had brought to us in October. Um, and that was after we watched a webinar on committee structure and right sizing. So the first point about monitoring of financial practices, this was that chart that we reviewed um, back in January. And on the right hand side, we found that most, stand, most regular meetings of um, bodies that oversee departments, they don't monitor the annual budget of their reporting departments. There were some exceptions. Most of them are approving monthly bills, but most of them are not monitoring the annual budget. So that's why we recommended that. On the next slide, um, we have this detailed process for running for a county board chair and vice chair. And I won't go through it right now, but um, it's going to come up on another slide because we made changes to it the next month. And then in um, February, we had two meetings in February. At the first meeting, uh, we looked at three options for restructuring committees, and then we decided to further develop a hybrid of two of those options. So why were we looking at these options? A lot of this came from Supervisor Lux research. We currently have 54 bodies that we either run or that we participate in. 
Um, the justification, a lot of this we heard from the counties association and, and from a couple other counties that have done this. Um, fewer meetings would encourage a shift and focus from day to day administration. To policy development, and that's for county board members specifically. And we've obviously been working on that transition for a couple of years, more or more than a couple of years now, and it would be just another step. <clears throat> it would give us the ability to attend more meetings. If there are fewer of them. And then a, a big point from these 2 counties that have done this. Was increased accountability from everyone. And then um, Andy Phillips, the attorney from WCA told us that state law gives us a lot of freedom for how we structure ourselves. There's no one right answer. There will be 72 different solutions in, in Wisconsin, but there's some parameters that we have to follow. So then at the second meeting in February, we had this list of responsibilities for the county board chair. And we spent, uh, gosh, I wanna say, an, it must have been an hour and a half that day or maybe more. Um, going through and picking these out point by point. So we reviewed all these other counties and we reviewed how we currently do it and, and where we could find things written down. We reviewed state law and those are the ones that we recommended. And then the process for running for county board chair and vice chair. The main issue that we ran across. And this came through in one of those webinars from WCA with our previous process of seven steps is that it was step number five. We previously had it written that candidates for county board chair and vice chair may directly contact other county board members to campaign for the positions. And there was a concern about that being an open meetings violation since um, the business of who is our chair and vice chair is, is of importance to, to the entire public and, and doing that um, having those discussions behind closed doors um, invites some issues with the open meetings laws. But then we also added um, a step where each candidate, they, they've got to be able to campaign somehow. And so doing that at the organizational meeting, allowing them 10 minutes to speak and answer questions, that was our solution for how to let them campaign. <coughs> And then the next slide, um, this was the hybrid option that we looked at at our last meeting. And then the action we took was to flesh it out in the committee structure document. And since that meeting, um, so this is really where things pick up that, you know, if, if all the committee members or other people on the call today have been to those other meetings or watched them, we haven't discussed any of this. Um, I heard quite a bit of feedback after that February 17th meeting, um, quite a bit of it from actually individual committee members, but then also some people, uh, some other folks on the county board and, and maybe there's other discussions I'm not aware of. And I think it's good to get that feedback out. So I just listed out five main uh, points that I heard from folks. Um, the first one was that, and, and actually, uh, Supervisor Gentis and Chair Brewer came to our last meeting and shared some of this, but then I heard some follow up at the strategic planning meeting on Monday that the, the campus committee needs more focus on education and culture. Um, the second bullet point was, I was trying to figure out how to handle the fair committee and, and I talked to Mr. Severson about how to split things up and. And he mentioned he had some big concerns about putting them into bigger buckets, um, the fair and parks committees, because they're a source of labor, um, working, working committees, usually people call them, and wanting also to keep the citizens and the county board members together on the same committee for now. And then um, also concern about length of meetings, that's been brought up multiple times. Um, the fourth bullet point there I heard from Mr. Sheep, a concern about not enough time for department head oversight. If we have too many departments in, in one standing committee. And then <coughs> heard from uh, both supervisors Luck and Severson about the executive committee 
having too much on its plate if they handle finance rules and strategic planning and personnel. So then on the next slide, these are the changes. So I, I really kind of wrestled with this. I spent, fortunately, my job hasn't demanding yesterday or the day before. So I was able to make some time for this and really thought through like how to address some of those complaints. And I, I actually didn't do what the committee directed me to do because I was hearing kind of opposite feedback or maybe opposite is not the right word, but additional feedback after the last meeting. <clears throat> and I didn't want to bring something that I just didn't think was going to sit well with people. And I, I thought maybe people were reconsidering that idea of fleshing out the, the hybrid option. So um, this is how I dealt with each one of these and folks can read it, of course, but um, I'll just give some highlights here. So needing more focus on education, I drafted an education standing committee and then that would be more limited to campus stuff. So it would have UW extension, um, the campus and then food services on it. Um, the fair and parks committees, I, what I did is I just kept them both intact, but I combined them and added language about creating a sustainable plan. Cause Carrie and I have talked quite a bit about the amount of time that different supervisors and citizens put into both of those committees. And, and I don't think it's really a sustainable long-term thing. And, and so that's where the language is. Um, and obviously this is all draft form, so it's up to up to the committee, you know, if they want to move forward with any of this or amend it or, or what have you. But um, the length of the meetings, what I did is I increased the number of standing committees from five to nine. Um, also, after hearing a little bit of feedback that maybe we just need to take a smaller step right now and, and maybe long term we can get to the five standing committees, but it, it might just be too much. Um, that also helps with the fourth bullet point, Mr. Seeps. Um, it reduces the number of department heads reporting to standing committees. The one exception would be LEJC, which would actually increase by one, but they already have five department heads reporting there, and I think they're pretty comfortable with it. Whereas I don't think there's as much comfort with other committees at this point. And then with the executive issue, uh, that committee having too much on its plate, what I did is I divided the executive committee into two. Um, I kept finance and personnel, at least compared to our current setup. And then I put rules and strategic planning into another uh, standing committee. So then I asked Melissa yesterday if she'd make a chart to show this, just to make it a little easier to visually understand. I know that um, you, you mentioned, Melissa, that you had to do a little bit of, there might be one line not connecting finance and personnel straight down into those other standing committees or yeah. There might be, yeah, you yeah. can see that it's not connected to anything other than the county board and that I'll fix it. Yeah, you intended it to, of course, but this kind of gets at, you know, what would each one of these standing committees be called, which departments or, or county um, or, or current committees would basically go to each one of these. It doesn't address, though, uh, quite a few other things that are off to the side, and there's a lot of supporting information in our folder for all this, but I just, on the next slide, just tried to highlight some of the significant changes, I think, that that people should be aware of um, if they can't read through everything or get bored by reading everything, because there's quite a bit there. Um, so I, I was trying to figure out... Um, how to deal with who would head up the, the finance and personnel and rules and strategic planning committees. And actually, I think a lot of these changes, uh, if you go to the next slide there, actually presented a good opportunity because we didn't really have any role for the vice chair. We had just talked about the chair, um, but having the board chair be the chair of finance and personnel and the vice chair be the chair of rules and strategic planning um, would be a way to split up some of the responsibilities. So that's how I drafted it. Um, we haven't talked about that yet, so I think that's really up for discussion. Um, but just wanted to highlight the things I put in the document so that it didn't seem like anything was getting slipped in. Um, eliminating the Committee on Committees. 
That's because of those changes we recommended back in December. Uh, making the highway, or we would now potentially call this the public work standing committee where you'd have, um, we'd have property and, and MIS going in there as well, but making them appointed or confirmed rather than elected. And Wisconsin statute allows us to do that, um, but, but we don't have to, um, so it's an option. And then um, the county board chair recommending appointments of county board members to bodies. And then the administrator recommending appointments of citizens to bodies, both with county board confirmation. And almost every county we looked at, they collaborated to, to do that. The county board chair and the administrator sit down to make sure they're, they're working in tandem and, and not at, at odds. And then uh, other significant changes on the next slide. Um, joint bodies, so these, by joint bodies, it means um, where you have more than one government agency sitting down and making decisions together about a department at the county. So that would be ambulance, economic development, and Simons. Um, they would remain independent, but under the way this is drafted, they would report to one of two executive-like committees, either finance and personnel or rules and strategic planning. Um, I drafted it so that the chair and vice chair would serve on the joint ambulance committee, but I don't, you know, I know uh, it's, it's you, Carrie, and then Mr. Cooey, um, you both serve today. Um, that's, I know how that, it, that's how it already is. It's the chair and the vice chair serve on the joint ambulance committee. However, Marty delegated his powers of being on there down to Mark and I, oh. instead of them being on there. Okay. I think that states that in that resolution for the joint ambulance committee. Okay. Okay. I didn't know about that. That's that's good. I'm sorry I didn't hear that point. Can you just repeat that, Carrie? The chair and the vice chair already are on the joint ambulance committee. However, Marty, as chair of the county board, appointed um myself and Mark to be those people on the joint ambulance committee. So it, it already says I'm looking up that resolution right now. Okay, thanks. That's great. Um, all the another significant change would be the all advisory and special appointment bodies. So things like, oh, it could vary from everything to the Viola Library Board to the Housing Authority, um, they would all report to standing committees. So those nine standing committees on that chart that that Supervisor Luck made for us. Um, we consolidated from 18 standing committees to nine. So it'd be basically a 50% reduction. Uh, we also removed 10 defunct or unnecessary bodies that mostly no longer meet. Uh, and then we added four bodies that were already meeting, but not in the county board structure document. And then the last thing was dr we drafted a process for making appointments at the organizational meeting in April instead of waiting until May. Um, I think it's it's a really a complex thing to think about, and it's really got to be kind of written out how how could you make that happen instead of waiting a month. So on the next slide, and by the way, um, if you looked at these materials before noon. If you looked at this presentation, this slide has changed, so I highlighted it in yellow. And um, Mr. Langrick, if you're the one showing um, the screen, I don't know if you can swap out documents and and uh, refresh. Or it's it's also in your email. I cc'd you on it, but it should be in the folder and on the committee website now. Um, I made. Uh, I can, oh, I can do one second. Let me. Uh, I'll pull it up one second, Mr. Chair. Sure. And I made a um, fair amount of errors on this one, and I woke up last night and thought of it in the middle of the night. I don't know why. Okay, so uh, I, pulling it up. Sure, right. Yeah, no, take your time. Um, I think before I had said each county board member would be on two, yeah, that's it, would be on two or three standing committees. And then I actually counted them up and somewhere on four. 
So I, what I said wasn't accurate and I, I just didn't really, hadn't thought through it. So this morning I redrafted this and it's just an example. Um, you know, how many, and actually the changes made it a little bit better if you like more people on committees because I needed to add some people in order to make it even. But this would actually, if it were this way where the finance and personnel committee and the rules and strategic planning committee each had nine people, now include the chair, the vice chair, and then the chair of each of the other seven standing committees. Um, if it were done that way, um, with each of these other seven committees, you'd have 11 people on HHS and veterans. Uh, some of those would be citizens, five of those would be. Um, seven on Pine Valley and child support, seven on public safety, that'd be an increase of two. You'd have eight on the education committee, seven on land and zoning, um, eight on fair recycling and parks, half of those would be citizens, and then eight on public works. So if you did it that way, what I did is down below in that chart, I just showed each supervisor one through 21 and what standing uh, committees they'd be on. I've got three columns. So if, you know, if we go forward with this, you know, there's a way to um, make the appointments even or more fair. And I think I've got a dot, uh, point down there, uh, it's an asterisk between the two charts, appointments to joint advisory and special assignment bodies should strive for balance between all county board members. Um, I wrote that somewhere into the rules too, but you know, that's really up for debate too. And, and you could, you can definitely move these numbers around. I've done it twice or three times now. Uh, Supervisor Luck helped me a lot with this when we were I think that was about two months ago when we were trying to figure out how this would work. And, you know, there's many, many ways to, to do this, but, but this would make it even, but you could switch it around too. So that's where things are at right now. So I'll just stop and, and let the committee talk. And thanks for listening to me for so long. So I, I guess I'll start. Um, so, I mean, I, I was not opposed to trying to get down to the five, but I understand wanting to maybe take this in steps and take our time to kind of sort things out. Um, but I think this is a great compromise and um, I think gives us a, a, a way forward that, um, you know, has addressed most of the concerns that we've heard. So, um, I, I'm definitely supportive of, and and at least at least we've made progress in trying to you know consolidate some of our some of our things. I think that maybe, you know, like child support in Pine Valley seems a little bit odd to me. Um, I mean, maybe Pine Valley just stays Pine Valley as its own thing, um, and child support goes with HHS or wherever makes the most sense for that, or what makes more sense potentially. Um, but I thought everything else made sense. Um, I mean, I think UW Food Service also because it a big part of their income and uh, you know is tied to the nutrition program. So it it, it kind of makes sense that that would have been under HHS. But I'm also okay with it staying um, under the education piece because it does also serve obviously the UW community over there. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I I think it's fine the way it is. I, I do think child support in Pine Valley maybe doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but whatever, it could be there. Um, so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it so far. Uh, thank you so much, Sean, for uh, for coming up with a with a compromise that still moves us forward. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I add a dimension to uh, Melissa's comment about uh, uh, Pine Valley and child support. 
that does stick out like a sore thumb to me. I don't see a logical connection between those two missions. Uh, and I do think that uh, child support is more logically uh, associated with human services. Uh, and, wh and what was the other one that you didn't think was uh, uh, logically connected to Melissa? I had just mentioned UW Food Service. It's not that it's not illogical for it. It's not illogical for it to be with, no. with education. It's no. just because a big part of their programming is now the nutrition sites. Yes, well, yes, and I think nutrition is logically uh, uh, sort of associated with human services because a lot of those people who participate in the nutrition program are qualified because of the income level, which is a determination that's made by somebody in human services. Uh, so there is some interconnection between, uh, quite a bit of interconnection there, I think, between human services and nutrition and human services and child support, uh, social workers, and so forth. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm in, in agreement with, uh, with Melissa on, on those two points. I, I'm, 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 uh, drowned out by silence. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, I, I just, can I get your, your, I'm assuming that your thinking was, we didn't want to have a committee where it only had 1. 1 department of responsibility, which is why you, and you couldn't figure out. What to do with child support, so that's how they ended up together. But do you have any opposition to Pine Valley just being a Pine Valley committee? Yeah, you're exactly right. That's what I was thinking. Um, I think there's a natural sort of a, you know, I, I'm just to be real straight, I think some people have a hard time with um, moving certain committees to be with anyone else. I think the natural pull is right to Wanting keep everyone to have their own thing so they can to be keep the single, attention. single. Yeah. yeah, so they can be that they have one it one topic or one department to deal with. Well, I yeah, agree. I mean, we yeah, we, that's what we talked about when we came up with the HHS issue with raising wages, and that created a lot of controversy. And had that happened in front of other departments, would it have gotten right. as far as it did? And so that's that's my thinking behind it. I don't know what the right solution um, is if we want to go forward with that sort of a principle that no department would be on their own, um, but. But if the committee decides it's not that important, or the county board decides it's not that important, and certain departments can still be on their own, I don't think it's the end of the world. We're still moving in the right direction here. It's just like, how far does it go? Will be the question. Right. I mean, we'd still have nine committees. It's just that child support would move over to a different one. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. To, uh, to uh, add an, just another dimension. And, and that is, I do think that as far as veterans is concerned, it very logically fits in with human services. It's basically a human services position. And there are so many functions in human services that overlap uh, with the, uh, with the uh, functions of the uh, veterans office, uh, whether it, it has to do with the uh, uh, psychological services or uh, food share or uh, uh, rent assistance on and on, probably a dozen different kinds of services that uh, can overlap and, and uh, which can be mutually supportive. Uh, uh, one mission can be mutually supportive of the other both ways. So I, I, I think that's a pretty logical connection as far as putting veterans with health and human services. Originally, comment? oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, with Pine Valley, I guess. 
I don't know. I, I have other concerns with, with some other things that maybe we could work on today, but I guess for this one, I have an, a, a question. Maybe to get an opinion from attorney Wendell, and if I could have an ability to share something. To the group on this WebEx, I could do that. And <clears throat> Mr. Wendell is on, he could uh, give an opinion to something. Well, I, I would agree with that. Mr. Chairman, may I just comment on that? I, I would also like to hear uh, a comment from the uh, director at Pine Valley. Uh, I, I wonder how he sees this connection. Well, maybe let's start with uh, Mr. Severson's question. So can he share his screen? Can anyone I'm answer already, that? Oh, I'm already okay. sharing right now. Great. So in front of you is an attorney general opinion from March of 1963. And where I have highlighted right here is the paragraph that I would like an opinion of, and especially this from here, this except to this last sentence. It says, except as to boards of trustees of county institutions. Like, to me, does that mean that we cannot you know, have Pine Valley, that Pine Valley needs to stay by itself. It's always been looked upon as an enterprise. As the county, uh, it, it's the county function, but it is separately governed enterprise by a board of trustees, as I understand it. How did they do it in La Crosse County? Do you remember Supervisor Luck? I don't, but I can look while Attorney Wendell is offering his thoughts. That'd be great because I thought they were combined in other counties. So, yeah, it's um, bear with me. I'm just pulling up some of the supporting documentation for it. Reestablish. So the the functions that are allowed here are to abolish, create, or reestablish. You're not abolishing it. You're just putting it where something else, not creating it, establishing it, abolish, establish. Um, I would want to do some further research on this um, and and read through the rest of this opinion. And it's also from 1963, so potentially uh, it's have changed since then. I would say, though, that based on just what's in front of me, um, you know, folding Pine Valley in with another committee is not forbidden. I know Vernon County is looking to do the same with their facility. Mr. Chair, do you yeah. want me to tell you about Lacrosse now? Sure. So Lacrosse has a Veterans Aging and Long-Term Care uh, Committee, and it includes their Highview Healthcare Center and Carroll Heights, which I assume are some kind of aging and long-term care. They have their Lakeview Health Center, which also I'm assuming is some kind of long-term care and veteran services together. So they do have, um, they're aging, but I don't know if those are ruled by a board of trustees. I don't, I mean, maybe they've set them up differently. I don't know um, if, if they're governed by trustees. So that would be the, the question to find out. Um, and then in Ozaki, they have, um, Sorry, theirs isn't as quite as straightforward. Here we go. They have their nursing board as a part of their executive, uh, as a part of their human services. So they have a board, a nursing home board, not, but I don't know if that's a board of trustees. I, I guess it could be. And that's also with HHS, Commission on Aging, Community Programs, Home Health, Long Term Support, and Social Services. In Ozaki. Okay. Thanks for tracking those down on, on the lacrosse example. I just 
went to their committee list and I clicked on veterans aging and long term care committee. And it says that that committee acts as the policy oversight committee for Hillview, Carroll Heights Lakeview Health Center veteran services and aging. This committee functions as the board of trustees in managing and developing policies for Hillview. Say, so, Sean, this is Lee Van Landite. May I make a, a comment? Sure. Yeah. What's that? Uh, the one thing that Don brought up just a moment ago is the reason I, I was going to be attending this meeting. Uh, as chairman of the Veterans Committee, I had suggested, I think, to you, to Marty, and to Clint, that it would be an excellent fit to put them with the HHS because they provide much the same service. Uh, we do have to accommodate both county and state law on this. And what I'd suggest maybe as the veteran portion of that, it not only be a committee that satisfies our county rules, but also as a commission, maybe do slash commission to fulfill state requirements. And uh, we can work with Clint on that one because he was a CVSO, so he'd know the uh, all the inner workings of that. But I, I think that's an excellent move since uh, Clint has come on a lot of the things that we used to do as the Veterans Committee is no longer in our purview. So I think that's an excellent place for it and I think it would work out just well, you know, quite well. And uh, if we work closely with Clint on that, we can get the, the wording on that proper so that we satisfy state and county law. So that's that's all I have to say. I think that it's a, it's a good fit there. So thank you. Sure, th thanks for the feedback. and. Um, I don't want to get too far from Mr. Seep because I, I remember I have to come back to you, but um, if I don't know if Mr. Langrick, you can share your screen again and pull up that uh, committee structure or body structure document with all the changes. And, and I did send out a, a new one um, because some of those mistakes I caught applied to that document as well. I, it's 07A. And if I'll direct you to the page number just to, to make sure we get um, the question answered about the veterans. Just looking for the page number now. So it'd be page 10. Um, no, it'd be the um, 07A would be the. Um, there we go. Yeah, that one. There you go. It'd be page 10. And there's a section E toward the bottom of the page or second half of the page. So the heading is health and human services. This is on the previous page, so you can't see it. Health and human services and veterans standing committee. And then um, section E would read, acts is the veteran service commission as follows. And then um, list out members, list out state statute, um, as far as providing aid to needy veterans, and then provide oversight and advice regarding the veterans service department. So those would be the main points. Um, one thing that we learned from that training and from the counties association is that this state law gives us a lot of freedom to create what we call a standing committee and have it operate as a uh, carry out the functions of what might statutorily be a commission or a board. So it would still function as a commission, but it would be combined um to allow for efficiency and more accountability so mr seep i can't remember you are bringing something up and i know you wanted did you want a legal opinion about something or did you get your question answered no i, I didn't have a question about a legal opinion somebody else did okay i must remember that wrong carrie okay um, Carrie, did you want to just keep going? I know you said you had some other other issues you wanted to bring um, up. I haven't had time to digest really on this new model that you just come up with here, but I guess my other concern would be if you look at Wisconsin statutes, I guess I'll share again. So if you look at Wisconsin statutes, um, 2702 on uh, County Parks Commission, um, 
talks about, you know, of less than 150,000. Talks about members of the Parks Commission and then in two goes in and county with the executive administrator, except a county with a population of less than 150,000, which has not by resolution provided for a Parks Commission. You know, it says that, which I did find the resolution. 1968 that clerk Kaylee found for me. It's right here establishing a county parks commission. But. And how they wanted to have citizen members on that, but. If you go down here, it says organization within 30 days and then um, their pond and such parks commission shall have the usual powers of such bodies. In addition to those you maturated in the shell use a common seal, make bylaws and choose annually from its members, all necessary officers. So to me, I'm wondering, does the commission need to be? Is that a separate body? A separate unit form like a quasi. Governmental type thing. Like, do we have, because I think you're putting it into a committee form instead of a commission. And I don't think you can have a commission and a committee together. Mr. Chair, can I, can I just mention what Ozaki County's got as their, that directly talks to that? So they have a natural resources standing committee. And within that committee, they have a park commission. So there must be some way to to legally do that. Assume, I mean, I guess I assume that they're legally doing that. Um, they have a commission within their standing committee, is what it looks like to me. Because then, if here in twenty seven oh five it says powers of commission or a general manager, so if there's not a commission, and you got and you didn't have a, a parks commission. Then the administrator would have to appoint, you know, or have the general manager oversee the parks commission. But if you don't have a parks commission, then you have to have a rural planning committee. And that was in an opinion from another attorney general opinion, also in one of these here, and I can't remember which one it is though, but. So, Carrie, if you go to page eight of that um, document, the 07A one that that Mr. Langrick had pulled up before, where we were looking at the HHS and Veterans Standing Committee and that Veterans Service Commission language that is in the structure document. Um, if you look at page eight, and this is under the Fair Recycling and Park Standing Committee, there's a section E. And it says acts as the parks commission. So what I was understanding from the counties association when they talked about the, the freedom statute in Wisconsin law is that counties have the freedom to organize and structure how they may want within the parameters of the law. And so these other counties that have created standing committees, they combine several things. They retain that language and they say it, they act as the park commission, kind of like the one I read off from La Crosse County. So I just pulled all the language that was already in the parks commission section. And um, usually when you track changes in word, I, I've been used to when you move language, it does a double underline and it's green so you can see that. So. I know this looks like I wrote all this, but I didn't. I was just cutting and pasting because I was trying to get everything alphabetical. Um, so I, I kept, I kept almost all the language um, where there was language about um, that the Parks Commission is administering or managing or. What have you, and this was true of all the standing committees. Um, I inserted the provide oversight and advice language and then like in parentheses, you can see it says IE I actually pulled this from state law. This is under the, um, the highway statute. There's a section that talks about how once you have an administrator. The highway committee can no longer do the day to day. Uh, administering of the county highway. System, they have to do this um, 
what they call policy making, determining, and broad outlines and principles governing administration. So I just pulled that language from state law and pulled it into each one of these. But otherwise, all the different points of things that the Parks Commission and uh, the Fair and Recycling Committee do, I didn't. I hope I didn't at least. Um, I didn't intend to delete any of the actual jobs that are listed out in the committee structure document. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, so to answer the question directly, every legal source that I am finding indicates that it is appropriate for a committee of the board to operate the county parks, which would be the county park commission. Uh, that's backed up by the AG opinion cited by Supervisor uh, Severson, and then I also pulled up some supplementary stuff um, using lawyer magic. But um, so yes, I I think that. It is possible um, we may want to clearly define the various roles and, and such, but um, I, I think that is appropriate and legal. I knew that was well, my question was, though, was about the, the institutions, the trustees of, of institutions. I'm assuming that the institution back then was kosher per se to consider um, skilled nursing facility that was called now an institution. Can you repeat that for me? It says the it says that you can create a committee, reestablish, and whatever, except as to Boards of trustees of county institutions. So it's, it seems to me, it reads to me, or thinks that you can't change that around, but it was from 1963. Mr. Seep, I think you were interested in uh, Tom Rislow's opinion. I think that's what it was that I was remembering from earlier. I don't know if he's on. I just flipped through everyone's um, contact information. I don't see him listed unless he's called in by phone. Could you give me a pricey of his opinion? Um, I, I didn't understand what you said. A quick summary of his opinion. I don't know his opinion. Oh, I thought you said you read his opinion. No, no, um, you had asked for it. Oh, okay. That's what I remembered that I'd forgotten earlier. So other other thoughts on on this? I don't know, Mr. Severson, if you want to keep going with other things, certainly welcome to. Uh, Mr. Chair, to, to answer Supervisor Severson's question, I think it is legal to have the um, Board of Trustees report to a standing committee. You're fading out a little bit, Mr. Wendell, so I don't know if it has something to do with your mic, but you might just have to repeat all that and stay closer to your mic. I might have to be facing my computer screen. Um, so the case law and, and supplemental uh, attorney general opinions do indicate that the um, board of trustees is regulated by the county board. Therefore, I think it is appropriate to have um, a board of tri trustees as a designated unit, but have that unit report to or be a part of a larger committee um, and then have that committee report um, and be regulated by the board as part of um, its normal function. And then I, I'll refer back to my previous statement that I don't believe that there's anything um, in the attorney general's opinion cited that prevents that uh, structure from taking place. 
So that was my concern was wondering that we still need to have board of trustees. We just can't not have the board of trustees and make it into a committee. Correct, based on what I've been able to find okay. thus far. If we really, really, really want them to be completely independent, I can do further, more thorough research. Um, but just based on what I have here, uh, I think it's feasible to put them into a committee structure. So then in the model that we're proposing then, would that Pine Valley committee then be considered uh, the board of trustees, all of those people that are on that? Correct. And would that have citizen members on that too? Because I know the Pine Valley trustees have citizen members involved. Yes, I, I can answer that. So if, oh, I just have to figure out which document that's on now. Um, actually, if you uh, look at the PowerPoint, the, the updated one that we were looking at earlier with the yellow highlight um, where it says membership, um, let me find the slide number. Be slide 22 or, or page 22 rather of the, um, it's 09A is the, the number of the document. It's called draft presentation to county board. It's the second from the last slide. And they're not actually slides because I PDF'd it, but second to the last page. So there, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members, and one of them would be a citizen. And that would match what the Pine Valley Board of Trustees already has. And then if you go to the committee structure document under Pine Valley, I just pulled the, the language from Pine Valley Board of Trustees and kept that. I think they say something about they need to be a nurse or a doctor and a resident of the county. That's, that's correct. The statutes define what those positions are for the Board of Trustees for uh, Pine Valley. Yeah, it looks like the language is just a little different. It was five number, five members of which four of whom shall be county board supervisors and one member shall be a citizen. And so I just kind of, it's just a formatting change I made. I was wondering about, I didn't know how many citizens are currently on the, uh, the fair and recycling committees and I think the way I listed it back on that same page is there'd be two citizens from the fair, two citizens from the park, and four county board members. So I don't know if that's enough or not. Um, maybe there needs to be more to retain all the good talent that's already there. So I, I don't mean to shrink that size down if that should be increased. That's a really easy thing to increase. There is, there would just need to be two more citizen members then. One for fair and one for um, parks. Okay, so it should be, so it should be um, three, three for fair and three for parks. Got it. Okay, okay. I'll make that change on my document. I've got. But then get into the a numbers issue, I guess, with statute in 2702 for Parks Commission, it says that there should be seven members. Does it give us any leeway to change the member number? I know that a lot of them that I was reading the past few days, they, they say the county board shall set. Um, but is that a more prescriptive one that it has to be seven can't be less can't be more. Um, that sheet says seven. There's no language like there is in the other one where it's three to nine. So it says the chairperson of the county board shall appoint county park commission consisting of seven members.
Um, I remember hearing somewhere, I think actually this might apply, this example might apply to the land and zoning committee. So if you look at that one, uh, I'm sorry, I see you're sharing your screen now. I was just gonna bring up, if you look at the land and zoning committee on that membership list, um, back to page 22 of that PDF, the presentation to the county board. So there's seven members listed there. One of them is a citizen and in parentheses, it says FSA. And I thought I remember hearing that one of these counties, the way they handled that, I thought, Supervisor Luck, you might remember this better than I do. I thought for that portion of the agenda of that standing committee, the FSA member votes, but they don't vote for the other portion. And so I wonder if that's how, I wonder if that's a way to work within the parameters of the law just to have not have the fair citizens vote on any parks matters that require a vote. Actually, I, I don't know. I like the idea of having the fair and parks combined because there's, there's just a lot of features that I think both committees are similar promoting and doing like fair wants to promote camping and have camping out there. Well, that's what parks is doing is promoting camping and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. Yeah. Could you also and add Ash, Ash, Creek, Creek, then you you got, Ash Creek Community Forest too? <laughs> well, I don't know that that's an issue between land conservation and you guys got to decide what you want to do with that and whether make it into whatever you want to do with it. But like, you know, Kathy Cooper, the department head for land conservation, you know, she's 5% of her duties are parks commission duties. And, and maybe you look at, maybe she can focus solely then on land conservation and maybe, um, Carla Downa could fall into be overseeing the parks department and coordinating that stuff. I don't know. That's something that the personnel committee, I don't know if somebody dealing with personnel or Clint would have to make that decision on how that would work out. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. With regard to the various uh, functions of the parks committee, uh, there's quite a bit of territory there. There's the the forest, uh, the the Aiken Forest, and the, the uh, uh, down on the river you have two or three uh, uh, spots there that are the responsibility of the Parks Commission as well, uh, and you have the Viola Park as well as the Rockbridge Park. Uh, that's a lot of additional duties, I would think, for the uh, for uh, for Ms. Doudna, who's in charge of the Ferris Committee. Uh, I I don't know how Mr. Um, uh, Severson feels about that, but there's a lot of territory there that involved in the Parks Committee that you know need to think about. I think. Yeah, it's up for discussion. That's why I kind of I thought of it. If we're doing this model, then you know, Kathy Cooper um, you know, had some concerns that maybe if it went to this model, that it would be a, be a little difficult to be able to complete a lot of tasks for Parks Commission under a new model that we were going to, and it just got me thinking a little bit. As you recall, when Mr. Colstead was uh, with the uh, extension division, the extension, uh, he was responsible for the the parks uh, department and uh, and the parks commission met with him uh, the, as an oversight committee. And then when the UW extension committee or the UW extension decided they did not want to be involved in the parks any, anymore. Uh, 
rather than hiring someone to manage the parks, uh, we asked uh, Kathy Cooper to coordinate, and we asked the Parks Commission members to meet with her, uh, and she was supposed to be the Office of Record and and coordinate for them, take them into the meetings and so forth. And the committee was organized into volunteers uh, who took on responsibility for different areas of the parks department. Uh, one person was assigned to Rockbridge, another to Viola, and so forth and so on. Now, just something to uh, consider as part of the history. And that model that you mentioned is still um, active today. We still have a, a Parks Commission member that, that looks over the bike trail and one that does the rifle range and one that does right. Rock Bridge. Yeah, we still do that yet today. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Snowmobile Alliance uh, funding. No, that's part of your, that's part of the other uh, department, isn't it? The Snowmobile is part of Parks. Yes, that's right. Well, generally, it's, it's actually the county's responsibility as a county. It's just that the county is given that requirement to the Parks Commission. Now, the MIS department could manage. I'm saying that just because I know they're on there and I'm going to get them fired up. But it's just as an example, the MIS department could oversee the snowmobile funding if that's what the county wanted to do. But it makes more sense that it stays with the Parks Commission just because. Yes, yes. And, you know, yeah, the, the, the grant was. Uh was submitted to the county for acceptance. And I think we talked about this last time too, but just because different functions are combined into one standing committee doesn't mean you have to rearrange department heads and what they're in charge of. It oftentimes just means that two department heads are coming to the same um, they're coming to the same committee or two or more, I should say. Yes. So it could facilitate um, the change that you're talking about, Carrie, um, the combination of fair recycling and parks into one standing committee. But should we decide not to go that route, then it could still stay like this and you could have two department heads coming. So what's the What's the membership numbers? For the fair. Yeah. So there's going to be four. Parks. There's going to be four. County board supervisors and six citizen members. Yes, I had four and four before four supervisors and four citizens. And then when when you just said that I changed it in my document. So it's four and six. So would the rules of the board need to change? Because then there would be a, a, there would be more citizen members than county board members, and I think there's a rule on in the board rules that says that the chairman then could be of that standing committee could be a citizen member versus if there was a majority of supervisors, then. If there's a majority of supervisors, then the supervisor shall be the uh, board chair. Is that how you currently? Is that or would would this committee be okay then, having a citizen member chair that parks and rep standing committee? And then eventually, if that chair was there, then would that chair be on the executive committee? I believe you'd have to have it be a supervisor, be the chair of the fair recycling and parks. So I don't think the board rules. I don't know. You know which one I'm talking about, that rule? I don't. And I, I just did a control F search on parks. And I didn't see anything in our county board rules. But is it something to do with more the membership of a committee? Like if yes. any majority, how is that? Yes. Set? It's not, it's not a parks thing. It's just a, a majority of, it's a membership thing. Right. That's Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we're just looking for it in the rules right now. If anyone yes, finds I rec Mr. Chairman, I recall when Mr. Clary was chairman of the rules committee, 
uh, the county board approved a rule that stated that wherever there were a majority of county board supervisors on a committee board or commission, the county uh, board supervisor must act as the chair. In other cases where there was not a majority, a citizen member could act as a chair. I personally believe that every county board committee should be chaired by a county board supervisor. Okay, I found it. Did you find it? Uh, not yet. I'm still looking. Okay, I think it's rule 18. And the sentence is the chair of boards, commissions, or committees shall be a supervisor when a majority of the members of the board, commission, or committee is made up of supervisors. But it doesn't say anything about the minority situation. Um, but I did notice in the committee structure document there are there are different points where it says um this particular committee um shall have a uh county board member being the chair an example would be the branding committee it was just set up like that so even though there's a minority of county board members on that two out of nine the chair is a county board member so we could we could put that into the committee structure document um just to make sure it's clear for everyone if we want the parks commission to be chaired I'm sorry, the fair recycling and parks standing committee to be chaired by a county board member. Mr. Chairman, I, I agree with that because uh, if you have a county uh, board supervisor as a chair of a committee, that ensures that the uh, the committee's work uh, is accountable to the county board because that county board supervisor reports to the county board. He represents the county board. Does anyone object to me adding that in there that the chair of the fair recycling and park standing committee has to be a county board member? Sounds like a good idea to me. I'm good with that. Okay. I don't I don't object object to that either. But think think of this now. Um so currently the parks commission has a county board supervisor as as a chairperson, but then the um, vice chair of parks is a citizen member and the fair and recycling committee has a county board supervisor as a chair and the vice chair of the fair and recycling is a citizen member now would that be would this committee be okay in this situation where it's always a um county board supervisor as a chair but the vice chair could that fall back on being a citizen member um, so i i don't see any problem with that i mean it, this is really just about the membership on the executive like committees um but yeah i'm just seeing now on the bottom of page seven it does already say that i just must have pulled that language must already be there it says the chair shall be a county board supervisor i must have pulled that from parks and or fair when i combine them all right, so, so you, so the, the this committee would be okay, you know, having a citizen member be a vice chair of that type of a committee. What do other folks think? Anyone object to that? So my only question for you would be, if a chair of a standing committee can't make it to an executive committee yeah. meeting, is the vice chair the one that would go to that meeting in their stead, or they just would be absent? That was going to be my next question. What's that? Because then it would matter, right? If yes, we let them that's, why, that's why I'm asking. Citizen vice chair. But if that's not the case, if we just say, oh, we don't, we don't, ex if the chair can't make it, we don't expect the vice chair to go in their place, that, that it's just the vice chair is the only member of that committee, of the executive committee. We could spell that out. Um, under the finance and personnel standing committee and the rules and strategic planning standing committee, if you all want right now, if you go to the bottom of page 8, you can see an example. Under finance and personnel standing committee, I inserted a section in the beginning and it says 9 members consisting of. And then county board chair, county board vice chair, education standing committee chair. Fair standing committee, HHS and veterans standing land and zoning standing committee chair. Pine Valley and Child Support, Public Safety, Public Works, all the chairs is how it's listed. So it doesn't say it's kind of agnostic on the subject. It doesn't say that vice chairs may attend in their 
place, but we could say vice chairs may not attend in their place if, if you all want. Well, then who would chair the meeting? Well, we're talking about the finance and personnel standing. Oh, committee. all right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's probably a good idea. I mean, yeah, I think it's probably a good idea to spell it out just so that it's clear that okay. we are, would not expect a vice chair to to attend the executive committee meeting in place of the chair if the chair can't make it. Um, that, you know, they're chosen for it because they're the chair. And, you know, yeah, I, I think we should spell it out just to make sure we don't have any any issues later on. Okay, I'll just read what I wrote. Um, Vice chairs of standing committees shall not attend the meeting in place of any standing committee chairs. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, any county board member can attend a meeting. I think the word attend is, a, is the wrong term there. How about act as a voting member? A quorum? That, I'm not talking about a voting member, but he's saying attend. No, I know. I'm saying, if, what if we change the language to act as a voting member of? Yes, yes. That, in place of the chair or something like that, or as a quorum, he, like Terry said. Unless he was a county board member, or she. Um. So, I'll try again here. Vice chairs of standing committees shall not act as a voting member in place of any standing committee chairs. Let me, okay read it again. Let me read it again. Yeah. Vice chairs of standing committees shall not act as a voting member in place of any standing committee chairs. What if that vice chair is a board member? County board member. I think we're specifically talking about the executive committees so do you have to instead of saying standing committee i think you want to say either of the executive committees because what you just read actually kind of implies that they can't even in their own committee act as chair if the chair is missing well it would just be um so where i'm typing it is below the number nine there it's oh the right underneath the finance and personnel okay yeah that makes yeah. sense yeah, and then the, the language would also go underneath the rules and strategic planning standing committee. Right, then that then that makes sense. Does anyone need me to read it again? Does anyone object to adding that sentence in to both of those standing committees? I think it's all right. Okay, I'll go ahead and I. Uh, add it into both standing committees then here. Well, we're still on the that and stuff. Can I ask Don a question? Go for it. Um, Don, do you remember, did Parks Commission, didn't they also have a recycling department under them at one time? Uh, I believe that they did, but you could. I'm quite certain that they did, but you could check that with uh, with Mr. Colstat. Uh, I, I think they did when Mr. Colstat was was the overall manager from extension. Uh, yeah, I'm quite certain that that you're right about that, but you know I'm getting older and my memory fails me somewhat. I know that Mr. Kolstad can can confirm it. I think Carlos told me that once before too that the uh, recycling committee used to be under Parks Commission. Well, Carla wasn't uh, wasn't on the on the commission when uh, Kolstad was the manager. Yeah, but I think let's just, we're just gossiping about it. But yeah, I. Pretty sure recycling was. I think this is still a good fit with what we're doing here on that, having those two combined together. 
I just wish we could work on a common thing for department heads, but that can be done at a later date at a later time. Um, one question I have for for you. So if you go to the bottom of page seven, I guess. Um, so just one page up there. Uh, and thank you. Thank you for putting this up for us. Mr. Langrick. super helpful. Um, so under fair uh, letter B is in boy. Oh, no, C, I'm sorry, C as in cat. I'm wondering what you think about this sentence. And I can read it out loud for, for um, anyone who can't see it, uh, working with the county administrator and executive committee recommend a staffing and volunteer plan for sustainable operation of the county fair and parks to be incorporated into the 2023 or 2024 budget. Yeah, so something needs to be done um, as far as the ability to have staff out there. And I don't know if we are breaking any labor laws or not, but we expect a lot out of our fair and recycling coordinator at the fair. She's probably overworking hours that probably are not even legal to be worked. But And we expect her to do that. So I think that there needs to be something some extra staff out there just during the fair time. I think with having a bigger committee and we're all able to work together, maybe it can there'll be more people to draw from. Like I'm looking at the recycling event that's coming up here in May or April, and we have to um, go out there and, and unload people's cars from TVs and electronics and recycle them away. And now instead of having or this, now we just increased our membership, you know, to be out there to help out that day. So now we don't have to ask for you know youth to come in and help us lift stuff. It's just a, a talk, I guess, but okay. I just didn't want to overstep my bounds or put words in anyone's mouth there. Um and does it belong in the strategic plan instead? That was one thought I had, but but I thought, well, if it's here, it would remind us all, but Maybe it should go in the strategic plan. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it matters too much. I just wanted to make sure the statement was accurate and it's a policy level thing that that we want to recommend to the county board. I definitely think though that we need to have. I do agree with that statement a little bit that C. For a short period of time. It may not need to be a year long thing, but. Well, it would need to come out by the next term of the county board because presumably we would have addressed it or decided against addressing it, you know, for some unforeseen reason. Recommend a staffing and volunteer plan for sustainable operation. It, so, yeah, the county administrator and the executive committee can work to develop a plan. It's not saying that we're going to be going to be it says incorporated into 23 for budget. Yeah. And I guess it should. We don't have an executive committee anymore under this. New way of doing it, so I don't know if it should be finance and personnel or rules and strategic planning. I maybe would say finance and personnel because it's a, it's going to come down to money. And a personnel is dealing with personnel also. Okay, I'm going to replace the words executive with finance and personnel standing committee. The administrator could always ask for the formation of an ad hoc committee for special purposes, right? He could ask, and I think the county board could approve that. Yes. Okay. Any other things that folks want to talk about, or you want me to walk you through some some of the other documents that we we really haven't pulled up? Why don't I just go ahead and uh, why don't we just take them in order as is on the agenda? So we'll say um, I think the agenda item number six was probably rules of the um, county board rules draft update. So if we just want to pull that document up, since I don't think we've 
we've had it up yet. Uh, this would be 06A. Um, so maybe I'll just start giving some quick highlights. So under rule two, that's where I inserted all that language about the process, the seven step process for choosing chair and vice chair. I just pulled it all verbatim from what the committee already approved. Um, scrolling down to page two, there's a little bit, um, this is still under rule two. It's the second full paragraph. Um, the county board chair shall recommend appointment of county board supervisor members of bodies. I started calling them bodies instead of committees, commissions, and boards, because it was so wordy. Uh, I don't know if that's all okay with everyone, but. Well, each of those when formed is a government body. When they're acting, they're convened. Okay. Okay. Um, and then subject to county board confirmation appointments to standing joint advisory and special assignment bodies shall strive for balance between all county board members. So that's the sentence I made up. That I read from before um, the next paragraph has the abstentions added. We talked about that at the last meeting when we were talking about the role of the chair and the vice chair. And then um, at the bottom of rule two, the chair and vice chair shall be automatic members of the finance and personnel and rules and strategic planning standing committees should be plural standing committees. Um, the Chair shall chair the finance and personnel standing committee and the vice chair shall chair the rules and strategic planning standing committee. I just wonder what you all think about that because we, we have never talked about that. I don't have any objection to it. Me either. I think that works. Uh, speaking personally, as someone who is chairing finance personnel and rules, it's, it is too much for 1 person. So that was some of my motivation in here too, <laughs> you know, I agree. Just, it's a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of work. Okay, um, I guess we can keep scrolling down um, rule 5 would be the next change. Um, this is where this is just language that we already approved about the county board chair shall be responsible for preparation of the agenda in conjunction with an assistance of the county administrator and county clerk. And then rule 6 is, um. This is more about, um. How chair, how the chair, and the administrator shall. Appoint people or recommend appointment. So. The language. Use I chose was the, and I talked to Mr. Langrec about this a fair amount. Um, the chair shall recommend appointments of county board members to bodies subject to confirmation by the county board. The administrator shall recommend appointments of citizen members of bodies subject to confirmation by the board. And then the Pine Valley and Child Support Standing Committee shall be elected by a majority of those present by secret and formal ballot. So this gets into some of the legalese and I think one of the big challenges we've got is um, state law around this and and I didn't see any other county when I was researching this that said we're, we're very strict. The administrator only does boards and commissions and the county board chair only does committees. Um, they were always working together, but you know, I'm trying to figure out, well, how are we gonna divide the line here? Because if we have to, you know, say just because it's called a board now, the administrator appoints supervisors to it. Um, we we could start changing the names of things to have it be how we want, but then you'd have the county board chair appointing citizens, and and it's just it just was getting really confusing to me. So I kind of drew that line in the sand, but but I want you all to be okay with that line if you think that's fair or not. And I, this is what I talked to Clint quite a bit about. 
Well, whether you call it a body or not, the statutes uh, state whether it's a commission or committee. And so, you know, when your appointments are being made, it's uh, it's clear that uh, who will make that appointment, depending upon, even though it's called a body, depending upon whether that body is a commission or a board or a committee, correct? Silence is deafening. <laughs> I don't know how to answer, so that's why I'm staying quiet. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Administrator. I like I can kind of share maybe a couple talking points that we had uh, prior to the meeting, if you're comfortable with that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of talked about um, there the, the statutes under 59 do say an administrator has the right to uh, point. Uh, for commissions and for boards, there's additional language that say that once you have an administrator, or other types of assignments that were uh, historically of the chair now become the duty of the administrator. Um, certainly, there's check and balance are kind of along the lines, though, as well as uh, administrator has their right to appoint or chair has the right to appoint, and then it still requires confirmation by the uh, county board. I think the the thing that is probably most mostly that you want to avoid is ensuring that. Um, you know that they're the appointments are being made or or recommended by your administrator or your chair, and then it's up to the board to confirm those. Uh, the the board doesn't have uh, I would see the the freedom to to disagree and then on their own by their own action select somebody else. But the check on balance is is that the board and its whole has uh, has control over the administrator by a majority vote to replace an administrator, and the same for replacing a chair. So. Um, Having the language on there of a recommended appointments, I think, still gives you the, 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 the left and right leniency to understand that, you know, technically maybe this one was an administrator, or technically maybe this one was a county board chair, but it it allows them to work together to make sure that they're on the same page. So I would visualize when we hit our our county board meetings and we have on there a an agenda item of of uh, confirmations of appointments. Um, that the language would probably lead, you know, read to the extent of the administrator and county board are making these appointments for recommendations, and then the confirmation vote is made by the county board. That's that's how I would visualize it um, in this time of transition. If things evolve where it becomes more appropriate down the line to to further specify by every chair um, within a, within the bodies that we to 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 lay basically on who's making the appointment. Uh, then so be it. But as a starting point in this time of transition, it seems like the recommend appointments and through that process, it, it allows us at least uh, it allows us to move past the committee on committees kind of a structure, and it's going to still force then an administrator and a chair to work together through a, a transition period in the short term. Thank you for letting me ramble, Mr. Chair. No, it was it was helpful. Um, and then if you scroll up just a little more under rule six, um, and, and by the way, if anyone objects to that language, please speak up. I, I think it's, I, I definitely welcome any objection to language. Cause I, I just want to make sure everyone's comfortable with this stuff. I want to make sure a lot of eyes are on it. Cause it'll be better if, if you all catch things that I wrote in here that don't capture where we want to be, um, just please. Please share your opinion. Um, the bottom of the second paragraph of rule six, that's that language about where the county board chair may recommend the permanent removal of a county board member from a body subject to county board confirmation. The county board chair shall offer the option of resignation to a county board member from a body before a recommendation for removal is brought before the county board. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh... I, you refer to committees, boards, and commissions as bodies, but the county board itself is a body. So, should you have, except for county board or something like that? Or are you, re, yeah, are you maybe, allowing? Maybe, maybe we should do that. Does anyone object to, um, to Mr. Seep's recommendation that we clarify that this? This does not um, 
what would the rule be? Is that rule 18? Is that, or no, a little further down. Um, I thought there was a something for how to remove someone from the whole county board, but um, yeah, I think there is by a majority vote or two thirds vote. That's in chapter 20, 17. 21. That spells out in chapter 17 and how that's done. That's not in our county board rules. Well, I don't know if it's in our county board rules. Oh, but it is. It is. I found it. it. Rule, rule 20. Um, vacancies on the county board are created in the following ways. Removal for cause by a two-thirds vote of all supervisors. And then B is removal for cause per Wisconsin statute 17.14. So I wonder if under rule six, do we need to say, um, should we clarify what, what Mr. Seep is bringing up here? I don't think that's a bad idea myself. Um, I think we should just so somebody doesn't uh, misinterpret it. Okay. What if that's we say- only, uh, That's my opinion. Only. Um, you, uh, when it comes to county board, you do have specified language under rule 21 that talks about filling a vacancy. Okay, so it's rule 21. Okay, um, so how about, I'll just reread the sentence. I'm inserting some words at the bottom of page um, three in that sentence, in that paragraph we were just reading from. So, oh, I think, Clint, scroll back up to 20. I think it's 20. Here's where it talks about felony, resignation, moving out of county, removal for a cause by a two thirds vote. So I think we need to refer to rule 20. Because the county board chair can't recommend that someone be removed from the county board. Um, well, because they're elected and the only people that can do that is the electorate, right? Um, well, no, person. rule 20, um says that it can be a two-thirds vote at the county board yeah okay That's so just one person yeah okay so you're in the right spot there right now so at the very top of the page where it's at currently in the view i have it written it says the county board chair may recommend the permanent removal of a county board member from a body and then in parentheses i have accept the county board under rule 21 Close parentheses, subject to county board confirmation. Don't you mean rule 20, not 21? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> rule 20. Does anyone need me to read that again? Yeah, uh, I, I thought it would, you should say, except a county board supervisor. Well, but that would be confusing, I think, because because a supervisor may be removed from a body except the county board. Um, All right, so somehow, so that it's clear. The county board chair may recommend the permanent removal of a county board member from a body, and then the parentheses is right after body, except the county board under rule 20. Maybe I should say the county board body <laughs> or the, except the body of the county board. Yes, that was, that's nice. Very nice. The other way maybe would be instead of saying body in that spot to actually say committee board or commission. Okay. So then you wouldn't have to go into that parentheses. That's true. I think I like that a little better. Does it, is anyone opposed to that solution? That's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm highlighting all these things in yellow, by the way, just so we kind of keep track of what's what's been changed in today's meeting. Um, and so I'll replace it not only in that sentence, but in the next sentence, because it also says body, um, I'll replace the second sentence where it says body with committee, board, or commission. 
That's very good. I never disagree with Miss Luck. I just like to add a dimension. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Chair, this is yeah. David. Yeah, go, go ahead. Hi, I, I, I apologize because I'm backing up a little bit on that rule. I, I feel like you guys maybe already addressed this and I missed it. I'm trying to keep up. But I just have a question as far as um, where you're speaking of the county board chair and the administrator sharing or dividing their recommendations. Um, again, I, I apologize if you've already addressed this, but how did you guys get to this where they're doing the appointments versus I know we're looking at striking the committee on committees. Um, did I hear it mentioned that this was statutorily based? How did we, I guess, how did we arrive at that? Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. Sure. Uh, so, as written, I have concern because that is directly um, opposed to statute, actually. Um, I, in the course of researching another matter, found a an attorney general's opinion that says specifically that a county with a county administrator cannot delegate or modify its appointment power such that uh, the county board chair makes any appointments. So as written, it doesn't say who's making the appointment. So long as it's understood that even the chair's recommendation needs to be the, the administrator is the actual appointer, um, then we would be in compliance with statute. Um, I think working together is great, but I do foresee an instance where a board chair and a uh, county administrator may have a different opinion on who the nominee should be. And I just want to make sure that it's clear that the administrator has the sole and exclusive authority to make appointments. For the board or commission where statute dictates that the appointment is made by the county chairperson or the county board. So that. Yeah. I just wanted you to fill that piece in because it doesn't say committee. And right. so that's where it gets a little confusing here because we got, is that what you're going to say, Melissa? Yeah, that was what I was going to point out is that the statute so, specifically talks to boards and commissions, not committees of standing committees of the board. Okay. Yeah. But go ahead, Ms. Glassbrenner. I know that your point, I think was something else. <laughs> well, yeah. So I was just wondering that kind of answers my question because I guess my question was when you move to a county administrator form of government, does the statute change and what was it prior to that? Did it state specifically that the county board chair was supposed to make appointments if you don't have an administrator or was that supposed to be delegated to another body? That tends to be by defined in the statute creating the body. So every statute has um, services uh, the statute say that uh, the county board will appoint the members You're speaking of closer to your closer to your mic <clears throat> uh, they're all defined in statute um, either by county board or secret ballot or, or something along those lines but there is one statute in the administrator statute that overrides all other statutes so there, I, I can't point you to one specific statute of what it was before. Um, it depends on, on which organization you're discussing. Okay, so now that we've moved to administrator, you're saying that you believe that the, the statute as written gives sole responsibility to the administrator. But Melissa and Sean, you're saying not in the case of committees. I'm confused. <laughs> it, oh, you it's, I think you summarized it actually pretty well. And and simplifying matters by calling them all bodies is what then creates this confusion. And I apologize for, for throwing a wrench in that. Um, but yes, you, you got the nail on the head there. Uh, okay, exactly so then my last clarification question is, on the ones that are not assigned to the administrator via statute, whether that's whatever committees, I guess we said, does it state that that is supposed to be appointment by county board chair or is that just a decision we're making now because we did have a committee on committees mr chair can i address that go for it so um one of the things that we did supervisor glassburner was we looked at what other counties um that have a county administrators and are of similar size to us 
And most of those counties, um, it's actually the minority way to do it if you don't have your county board chair um, assigning supervisors to committees. So that was was really, I think, for me, the kind of the defining moment for what, on, on making this decision was that most counties do actually have their county board chair assign supervisors to standing committees. And it's not unusual. It's actually the norm. And um, there was, I think, one county that did it something similar to us. I think it's Iowa County has uh, a committee on appointments or something like that. But but for the most part, it's very common that the county board chair is actually the one who makes the appointments of supervisors to committees. And then the administrator would do appointments to boards and commissions as per statute. Okay. And I, I wasn't arguing that. I just wanted to clarify that it wasn't necessarily statute based. It was based on like what we did, re like you guys did research on other Correct. counties. Yeah. I want that to be, I wanted that to be very clear because if this is, you know, I just don't want us to say that something was statute based if it's not technically statute based. I just wanted to clarify. Well, yeah, it was not. It was there based are, on our opinion. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, may I speak to Ms. Luck? Yes, you may. And to Ms. Blasphemer, I think that there, there still are, you know, two statutory exceptions, one or two statutory ex exceptions where uh, uh, people are elected to a uh, to a body, right? Correct. One is the highway, I think. No, not the highway. You can do it either way, I guess. But uh, Pine it's Valley. Pine Valley, yes, and that's the way it's currently written in these drafts that are before you today is that Pine Valley would continue to be elected by uh, ballot by the county board. And I've got that both in the county board rules and in the committee yep. structure document and also in the presentation so that that's I think I have in the presentation. I better check. Is that the, is that the, is that the only oh, no body? Problem. That's the only is that the only body that's elected to my understanding. That's the only body that is elected by the that has to be elected by the county board that we currently have. Okay. Before we had 3. We had yeah. highway. We had uh, Pine, Pine Valley and we had committee on committees. That's correct. I think. Um, someone else was going to jump in and say something. Carrie, I, I just had a question for the attorney. I guess I found a statute, and I just am curious. Then, so one statute can override all other statutes, right? Is that what I'm understanding from Mr. Wood? Uh, statutory interpretation generally specificity is favored over generality. Because I just, I noticed um, they're sitting here and I was looking at chapter 27 of the Parks Commission. It just says that the chairperson of the county board shall appoint the Parks Commission. And then down in number two, it says in any county with a county executive or county administrator, except in a county with a population of less than 150,000, which would be us, which has not by resolution provided for a county parks commission, which we have a resolution. That allows for a county parks commission. Um, the county parks commission shall consist of seven members appointed by the executive or county administrator. So, in that case, what you're saying is that that statute that you're referring to there overrides that chapter 27 statute. I, um, what I suspect is that this was modified after the passage of the administrator statute. And just kind of had it the language baked back into it. That makes sense. Sure. Here's the here's what I was referring to here. This, this line here. I have it pulled up. What got me thinking they're looking at that is what Ingrid was saying. Got onto that. I'm like, huh, you know. 
And ultimately, when I was talking to Mr. Langrick about this, I think the word inserting the word recommend in there gives us a little leeway, you know, so that if technically um, he needs to be recommending the appointment of the Parks Commission half of the Fair Recycling and Parks Standing Committee, you know, that's why I think collaboration is such a key point to stress and that that was stressed to me multiple times by multiple administrators and county board chairs who I contacted that they they sit down with the administrator either the day of the organizational meeting or you know in the next couple of weeks before the May meeting to make sure that they've got all their ducks in a row together yeah i would say that the statute that you're pointing to describes that process we can't quite hear you um, the, the statute you're pointing to describes the exact process that we're talking about here, where the county administrator would appoint a member to this commission, and then that would be subject to confirmation by board. I don't know why they felt the need to, to spell it out here. Maybe it's because of the population exception and the resolution requirement, um, but it, it's consistent with the other statute that I was referring to. Does anyone object if we keep moving on through the rules? I I have a question whether it's next or not, and maybe you're not addressing it. Can I ask? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, the next thing down talked about, you know, the normal term limits that we've always done uh, two consecutive, three consecutive terms of three. Since we're reorganizing all the committees, have you addressed how we'll start with that or how how that will go? No, I have not addressed it and we have okay. not, we have not discussed it as a committee. Well, the rules of the board, Sean, I think have it in there that if you change the name of the committee or structure, I think it's if you change the name of the committee, then it, re then it goes right back to, to like creating a new committee and then you automatically go back to the six year term. And it's it's in the county board rule. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Ms. Luck. The problem with that would be that then everyone would be going off. Like if we start, we're so essentially we're redoing all of our committees, and that would mean we'd have in six years there would be no veterans on that. You know, no people that have been on the committee before. They would yeah. all start new, and so that so we were going to have to figure out some way to introduce some sort of staggered way of doing this. Um, I think so that we don't have full turnover in six years of every single committee. And I, I got to tell you all too, you know, actually, Mr. Langrick kind of made me feel better one day because we were talking about this and he said, it's not like we're going to be able to make this all perfect right away. You know, that we'll have to be learning from this, you know, if we decide to go forward with this change and, and we'll have to make changes in the, in the coming months to address some of these things, but. Certainly there perfect. will. The, the term limits, that was one thing that when I was going through all these committees, commissions and boards, sometimes we specify it, sometimes we don't. It's, I didn't have time, I didn't have the bandwidth to do that. I think we might need some help from administration with that. And the other one that really jumped out at me was per diems. Um, doing all this research, boy, you hear from some people who are like, well, the county board doesn't let us do per diems and other people will. So, you know, you read in other descriptions and it says these people shall be paid per diem from this committee. These people shall not. It's it's very uh, it's been cobbled together, you know, over decades and, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So between those two things, the terms and the per diems, we've definitely got some more work to do um, to make all this make to be fair. And there would be time for that too, because you know we'd have a couple of years before we even get to the first point of, re you know reassigning committees. So there's time. Oh, I thought we were doing it soon. No, what I'm saying is we would create the committees now, but but everyone's going to stay on the same committee for at least two years, and so okay. two years from okay. now is when we'd have to know whether we're going to stagger some terms or whatever. Uh, because I. The way he has all those listed, we're not all on the same committee. So I, it's fine with me. Okay, I'm done. Good question. Good question. I was definitely thinking about it. 
but Mr. Chair, I wasn't talking about it. Yeah. Um, if I can share again, I want to share with you a resolution that kind of spells it out from 1968. You know, it's resolution 99, but talks about it kind of right about in here. It says members, see where I'm showing at right here? Uh, yeah, we can see your screen. Which paragraph are you reading? Oh, I see it, it says, now. I see yeah, it. Resolved, and then down where it says members shall be appointed by the chairman of the county board, one of whom shall be appointed for a term of one year, one for a term of two years. But if I scroll down here onto the bottom on where it says Wednesday, January 24th, it says Chairman Kintz announced the appointment of the following members to the County Parks Commission. And then that's how they did that. Yeah. Interesting. For the staggered term. So that might give you an idea right now of how we could maybe do something like that with other other things. Yeah, I like that. They did a good job. All right, okay. I'll stop sharing. No, no, no. That's good. Thank you for Thank you for bringing this up. It's definitely an issue that we need to uh, that needs to be addressed, and I don't think we can address it in a short amount of time. It's going to take some work. We're going to have, Mr. Chairman, I'm sure as we as we proceed with this over a period of time, we're going to have some bugs and kinks that we will probably want to iron out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if we go back to the rules on page three, I'm still under rule six. There's a little bit of language in there about the county administrator. Um, may, they, it was that they they had to advertise um, in the Richland Observer for vacancies, but I know in a lot of cases we don't advertise because I, now I've gone through enough of these. Um, a good example might be the economic development board. Um, I know that that body's been doing their own recruitment, but um, I just wrote it so that it would give the administrator some more leeway to either solicit nominations in the Richland Observer or to solicit it from a body of the county board. So oftentimes you'll have department heads or you'll have like the nutrition advisory council or whoever it is, they'll be looking for people and and they'll recommend those forward to the county board and those go through through Mr. Langrick. So I just wanted everyone to know that the way I wrote the language was to give him the options and just to give everyone that chance to object to that way of giving him options if you don't want that. Okay, I'm gonna let's keep scrolling down though. Then um uh, the very bottom of rule six, right above rule seven, this is that sentence we came up with that the county board chair may act as a voting member if a quorum is not otherwise present for a standing committee. So that's where that language is plugged in. Um, there's another rule nine, a section where we were talking about abstentions and we, we had the language of you could get out of a vote um, if, if you're excused by the chair and we just, that language is replaced with if unless an abstention is declared. So someone now can just call out, I want to abstain and and the chair doesn't have to excuse them. And we had discussed that, I think in January or February at the last meeting actually. And then that's pretty much it, but if we should keep scrolling and see if there's any more changes, just looking to see if there's any more. Oh, um, rule 19, this was regarding the chair. That, when it's when there's any doubtful case about which body should hear a certain resolution or ordinance, um, we deleted the word uh, words proposed resolutions and ordinance and replaced it with all matters, so that if it's not necessarily a resolution issue, that the chair has the responsibility of telling everyone where it should go. Um, and that's it for the county board rules under agenda item number six. And then maybe we should just keep moving right along to the other documents here. Um, just, you know, the committee structure that's under 07A. Um, you know, there's there's quite a bit in, in here and I um, certainly invite any questions that people are, you know, wondering about certain things. I mean, some of this stuff I had to come up with language because it wasn't in here. Some of this stuff I got 
uh, like Ms. Thorson and Mr. Gudgeon, they helped come up with language. Um, Ms. Luck did research. I know I was just on the phone with her yesterday. Can you tell me what the library or email? Tell me what the library planning committee does. I've never heard of this. <laughs> you know, I, I saw it in the committee structure document and we had missed that. So she came up with that language. Um, got a lot of updated language from Ms. Thorson. Um, added in language about what each of these bodies reports to. Um, the branding committee, that wasn't in here. So I pulled the resolution language, chapter 980, that's for sex offenders uh, when we're looking for housing for them. Tracy helped with that. We kept the city county committee. Um, I just wrote a little language on that. There was nothing in there. Um, I said it should be just two members uh, consisting of the chair and the vice chair. I think it's three members now. And I think, Mr. Cosgrove, I think you're the third member, but I don't think that group's been meeting. So I didn't know if that was okay to just do the chair and the vice chair, if you think we should have another person or you know what you thought of that. Looking to see if, oh, you're muted. Not sure if you're trying to talk, Supervisor Cosgrove, or if you heard my question, but just jump in. If I'll just keep scrolling down in this committee structure document to see if anything else jumps out at me. Um, I did talk to Amy Forehand about the Criminal Justice Coordinating Committee. Um, so add a little clarifying language there. I kept the economic development one kind of vague because I know that's under debate and, and change right now. Um, Supervisor Gentis, I, I added some language into the Education Standing Committee. Um, I took a shot at it. I know you all talked about that on Monday at Strategic Planning, but um, some language about promoting the campus as a higher education and cultural center for Richland County. I appreciate that. No problem. I, was, I think you had good feedback, and so it's, it's in there. Um, uh, finance and personnel pulling out the, um, pulling out the coordination between different departments and moving that to the rules and strategic planning committee, since the rules committee looks at committee structure and, and, um, I don't know if that's the right decision, but that's, that's what I did. And I also pulled the audit committee into finance and personnel. So the audit committee will go away. Is this helpful for me to give highlights? <laughs> Definitely, I think so. Um, let's see, let's see what else is jumping out at me. Like land conservation and zoning, I just pretty much pulled all the language in, but I just inserted that provide oversight and advice. I replaced anytime it said manage or administer. Um, I replaced it with policy making language. Um, library boards, state law says that those can be supervisors or citizens, and we just always say supervisors. So I, I corrected that on all the all three library boards. Um, I fixed Mississippi Valley Health Services Commission. Um, it used to say it had to be a county board member, but uh, Dr. Barron's is on that, so I, I fixed that. We noticed that problem when we were going through here. Um, let's see here. A lot of clarification on who is doing appointments since it's oftentimes not been defined. So that's kind of interspersed. Oh, I added all that language in under each standing committee. That each standing committee monitors the actual versus proposed annual budget and funds managed by, like I'm under Pine Valley right now, Pine Valley and child support departments on a minimum quarterly basis. <laughs> Thanks for highlighting that. So that's under each standing committee. Uh, public safety, there were a couple points where it 
I highlight sheriffs there because there's like five departments reporting, but it didn't specify. So I don't know if that's right, but I think it meant sheriff's department. And then I added under K, uh, Mr. Langrek caught this, conduct an annual inspection of the jail. I had missed that and that wasn't in there. I'm not seeing anything else jump out to me. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any objections? So, Mr. Chair, I'm wondering, are we to the point where we want to present this to the board as as information only, or are we wanting to go to the board? I guess I'm wondering where everyone else is sitting on this. Um, you know, whether we want to present this as, uh, or make the recommendations and say, this is what we, we, this is where we think we should start. These are the changes we think we should make now. Um, or, or where are people at? I guess is my question. And can we hold that just until we go through the last document? It's pretty brief. Oh, sure. Sorry, I thought we were done. No, 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 no. It's a good question, and, and I want to know the answer, too. But um, if we go to agenda item number eight, roll the county board chair and vice chair. So here there's a, a separate document. And the document probably to open is 8A. And this is what we talked about last time, that we would revise the policy on uh, authority of management, roles of members and chairs. So, um, yeah, it's already pulled up there under item 10. So I just pulled in everything that we had already oh, I got agreed to. <laughs> um, I added the statutory references. Those are I through uh, Roman numeral one through Roman numeral three. Those are required by state law. And then Roman numeral four through 12, those are all the optional ones that, that we chose to add. Um, I think I did add though, I'm not seeing it. Um, oh, if you go to vice chair, um, I added preside, uh, Roman numeral two, preside at meetings of the rules and strategic planning standing committee. Yeah, I'm not trying to get yourself your Um. And the vice chair one, I just, uh, Roman numeral one is from state law. And Roman numeral three is a catch all um, for other yeah. duties that the vice chair might be given. And that so catch all is up there for the chair also. So those are all the changes I, I made to that document. So it really goes hand in hand with these other documents with the rules of the county board and with the body structure document. So that now is everything. <laughs> Does anyone have, but does anyone have any questions on this one? I just don't want to slip that in without a chance for a comment. So what do folks think about um, Supervisor Luck's question? Where, where do you want to go with this? Do you, do you want to take it to the county board? Um, do you want to postpone going to the county board? Mr. Do Chair? We, do we need to request a special meeting at the county board if we're not ready for Tuesday? That that sort of thing. Yeah, go ahead. So, I mean, I, I think there's actually two separate things. I think that we have talked a lot and I think come to a consensus on the chair and vice chair roles. Um, so I don't think there's any question that that should move forward. Um, and how we go about, um, well, yeah, I mean, and how we go out on electing them. I think that that information for sure should go forward. Um, and I, I mean, I personally am comfortable with sending, um, the current version you have with the 9 committees forward. 
to the county board. Now, perhaps it would be helpful to have a special meeting where we could go through this entire presentation um, because I think there's going to be a lot of questions and a lot of concerns for the supervisors that have not had the time to attend any of these meetings. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to a special meeting to address this if we think that that would help people really understand and, and have a really good forum for answering all questions uh, at that time. So that's where I'm at. Mr. Chairman, uh, once again, I agree with Ms. Luck. Okay. Oh, this is Carrie. Yeah. I'm up in the air on it right now. What should be done? She, Melissa did bring up some good points on that, and I probably would be accepting, I guess, of, of uh, having, I don't know if we need to do a special meeting of the county board. I guess if you want this, it all comes down to like if you want this county board to be the ones that are voting on it, or do you want the new county board to vote on it? I also have one question about per diems. We can talk about that sometime. So are you up in the air on, um, can you just say a little bit more on that? <clears throat> like, I don't know if we need to call a special meeting. Like, I think we can make a presentation at this county board's meeting and then maybe leave it until the new county board to vote on it. So that, that's just, it's up to you guys. I don't know how much we're going to have like two county board meetings in a week or. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I add a dimension? Of course. Uh, I, uh, I would think that uh, since, uh, this board is familiar with all the processes that they have gone through in the last term and the one before that it would be appropriate in order for this county board to approve it, keeping in mind that uh, as we proceed over the next year or two, there are going to be a lot of questions that come up that may need uh, correction or modification by the new board. I think it would be very confusing if you have a lot of new board members come on uh, for them to have to familiarize themselves with this total history. Uh, it's, uh, it's totally understandable in the mind of Melissa and others, as John and others who have uh, who have studied this whole issue. And uh, I, I think it would be appropriate for this document to be presented to the present county board. Questions may come up later. We we know that this thing is gonna be modified uh, over a period of time as kinks come up or we find bugs in the system. Uh, but if we, I think we're gonna get ourselves into the the quagmire of starting all over again if we have a lot of new members on the board uh, coming on. Let's give them a document that we're working with that, that does not preclude new board members from having an opportunity to raise questions about how we're operating and, uh, and ask for some consideration of revision. So I, I again, I, don't like to say the word disagree, but uh, just another another dimension to the honorable Mr. Severson. I'm done. Mr. Cosgrove, do you have any thoughts on this that I'm wondering if you can help us? I don't think he's online. I think he sent you a text message. Oh, okay. I see his name is still up, but I'll check my text messages. Oh, he had to go pick up his kids at 255. 
So um, I'm wondering uh, if Chair Brewer is still on the line um, and or Mr. Langrek can speak up about what's on the, I have not opened the agenda myself for Tuesday's county board meeting. Do you all feel like there's time to discuss this on Tuesday or do you feel like we need a special meeting? Do you have any thoughts on that? Mr. Chair, this is Administrator Langrick. Uh, some of the ones that are probably gonna warrant some discussion is going to be the strategic plan. Uh, we'll be coming forward uh, for discussion. Uh, other items is going to be the item that we did talk about in length with finance and personnel, which is the spec design for um, soliciting out for a contractor to talk on ambulance. Um, there's a couple other that may warrant some discussion. So um, I, I think that they're all very important. And I guess if, if this is something that we're going to try to implement uh, prior to the putting the new, um, the new session in place, then I think it, it has to be on there. If we're comfortable with a delay on it, then yeah, that's then then we're we're not so pressed. Um, I guess I I'll, I'll have to know here shortly on where we stand with it uh, to know how to help structure that organizational meeting. If if changes in how we're going to uh, implement and roll out for election of a board a chair and a vice, um, you know that that would impact that meeting. Um, as well as what we're going to do with a committee on committee. If we don't do anything, we're kind of in a status quo and we'll be electing committee on committee. We'll be electing uh, highway. We'll be electing uh, the board of trustees. Um, so, uh, and, and as well then as like trying to put out a preference sheet and uh, the, the biographies and the whole process for running for chair, you know, those things will have to kind of get at most Ricky tick if they're, if we want to have that information available for that orientation meeting. Um, as well, then, too, if, if we're going status quo, uh, the 1st meeting then would really be like we did last session where we're going to do election of a chair, election of a vice election of committee on committees, election of board of trustees. Uh, or vacant members, it would just be the ones that are kind of up for vacancy because that is a, a rotating 1 if a memory serves. Highway will have to be elected. Uh, but then we would probably, uh, you know, we take care of other types of businesses, but then we'd have to wait until May then presumably after a committee on committees to have a seating uh, confirmation for all the placements at committees. So that could uh, impact our ability to do committee commission board works uh, through the end of April and beginning of, of May. But if that's, if it's warranted and that's what it takes, then, then so be it. We can, we can still execute that way as well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Chair Brewer, do you have any thoughts? Okay, I'm not, I'm not hearing him, but um, just pipe in if, if you're just having trouble getting unmuted while, while others of us talk. But um, what I would hate to do probably is drive the school bus right now. Oh yeah, he probably is. Good point. Um, what I'd hate to do, and I know we've got the chair of the strategic planning committee up here, is to take too much time from that because I know how much work you all have been putting, several people have been putting into that. Um, not good for us. I, I guess I myself would kind of like this, you know, I agree with Mr. Seep. I'd like this county board to consider it, um, but I, I think it might take a special meeting and I hate to start splitting things out, you know, splitting the role of the chair and the vice chair out and and all the documents are created with all the changes kind of intermixed. So it would be kind of a lift for me to separate those out. And I've already spent at least a couple full work days this week working on this. So I guess I'd prefer to, uh, to have a Mr. special Chair? meeting. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, can we not put on the county board for this next meeting to have a meeting on the third on the the fourth Monday the twenty or Tuesday the twenty second, just to address this because I think this is a very good thing that's been being done and I think we need to give time and let every and give a good presentation. How do you know what this is? Yeah, I mean I'm I'm fine with that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> yes, I, I'm very much in favor of a special informational meeting for at least two hours, perhaps longer, 
uh, to fully inform the board of uh, what they're going to be voting on at the regular meeting, uh, unless they're going to vote on at that meeting. I, I wouldn't think so, but uh, I think we definitely need an education meeting, a, an informational meeting to lay it all out to them so that we're ready to go. I, I think it's too much to put on a new board. And I think it's a, it's a disservice to all the hard work that's been done by the Strategic Planning Committee. Mr. Chair? Yeah. So, I mean, we can't have a special meeting before the March board meeting. So no matter what, if we don't bring it to this March meeting and vote on it, it would not be in place before we would be having our organizational meeting. But we could present it as a special meeting the end of March and then at our organizational meeting, if we voted on this, no, we would still be stuck with the old way though. We'd have to vote for the chair, the vice chair and the other ways until we adopted this. So either way, we're. it doesn't seem likely that this is gonna get approved by this board. Well, the only, the only thing I would add to, um, or maybe kind of differ a little bit on is, I think if we did a special board meeting on say March 22nd, like Ms. Gentis threw out, still there, isn't it? we yeah. could, we could really night. leave it up to the board, you know, if you don't want to do this, if you think it's too soon, we don't have to move forward. Um, but then we, we're going to have to go with the old way for everything else. But if we do move forward, it would be helpful to have a vote tonight so that so that administration and, and other staff can get ready. Um, so it's it's really up to that board anyway. You know, I mean, they could either vote it down or they could vote to postpone it or just take no action. Um, or they could vote to move forward with it. The thing I like about doing a special meeting is we don't have any resolutions drawn up. I made several changes today based on the feedback that you all had. Um, it would give you all a little more time to read through it. You know, so we could do, uh, and and we're missing one member. Um, you know, so we, we, we could reconvene um, here in the next, um, you know, less than a week we probably need to reconvene before the county board meeting because, well, before the 15th, before our regular one, because we'll need to get their buy-in to do a special meeting. Um, so, you know, if we met, say, like on Monday, we could have some resolutions drafted by then, we could have these updated documents and, and just kind of tie up loose ends before we go to a special meeting. Makes sense to me. I like the idea of, of having the ability to take action on the 22nd if the board so chooses. And then we would be able to have our, if they did, if we did decide to adopt it, then we would be in place to go ahead and have our organizational meeting with the new and vote for the chair in the new format. Is that, a, are you making a motion? Um, I can make that a motion if that's what we're, do we need a motion? Is that what we're looking for? I think we do need. I think we do need a motion just so that we're all on the same page and there's a record of what we did today. So, do you want me to clarify my motion? Yeah, could you just read it out and I'll, I'll write. Well, you, I mean, I'll try. So, I, I make the motion that we um that we that we ask for a special meeting of the county board to present the documents as we've amended today to the county board for possible adoption at the special meeting. Does that is that cover it all? Let me read it out. So this is a motion that we ask for a special meeting of the county board to present these documents as amended today for possible adoption at the special meeting. Can I say something? I think you should say before the end of March because in that motion. Are you okay with that, Ms. Luck? I am, yep. Thank you, Linda. Okay, okay I'm gonna read it again. So it's a motion that we ask for a special meeting of the county board before the end of March to present these documents as amended today for possible adoption at the special meeting. 
So then that just that doesn't make it be like on the fourteenth then, right? Correct. Uh, 15th, I think, is is our regularly scheduled one. Right, but I thought it was 14th that you want to have the special meeting, and then 15th we have county board. I'm sorry, I meant a special meeting of the rules and resolutions committee. Okay. I'm sorry. So you you want rules to meet on the 14th? Well, let's just handle this one first, and then we can address um, when we would meet. So we got a motion motion by luck. Does someone want to say that? I'll second the motion. Okay, so a second by C. So any further discussion on this motion and and I don't know, Carrie, if you want to do we need to clarify when rules and resolutions would meet in order to feel comfortable with voting with this? Or when would, if, you, when would when would you propose that county board be informed in that special meeting would it be like the week of the twentieth? Well, we would need them to sign off on it, right? We would probably pass around a petition or we'd need to adjourn. To a special date, wouldn't we? Yes, I think if we if we adjourn to a, a date and time by motion of the body, you're okay. When we wouldn't have to do the the um, the, the, petition? the petition. Yep. Okay. What was your question again, then? So would so if we were going to adjourn to a date and time, oh, county board on the fifteenth would it be house? for the week of the twentieth, or would it be for like the first week of? April. This this motion would be uh, saying it would be before the end of March. So it would not be the first week in April. We could still do the first week of April. We just we just have to have our organizational meeting on the 18th. I think we just have to have that by statute. I think it would be tough to do it the first week in April Ooh. because of when the election is and that administration has to send out the interest form and they need some time to be able to edit that interest form. So the interest form lists out all the bodies of the county board and if we're changing those, they're going to need some time to be able to change their document and then get it sent out to all of us. The discussion. I do. So I do agree with the motion as stated before the end of March, just to give administration enough time. Go ahead, Mr. C. Yes, I agree. Motion. Uh, uh, how does this uh, uh, fit uh, with uh, Mr. Langlock's uh, work schedule and workload in terms of preparation for these future meetings? Mr. Langlock? We certainly have some things going on, but uh, obviously these are pretty big natured items, so they're going to displace other types of initiatives. So they will. It will arrive at a priority. Yeah, are, are you in favor of this or are you asking for more time? If it's something that we want to do and we want to have it in place by the organizational meeting, then the sooner is the better. If it's things that uh, that uh, we think are going to happen after the organizational meeting, then it's uh, less pressing. But uh, like um, Supervisor Murphy Lopez was saying, if we want to have uh, you know, some of the design rule changes of having solicitation out for new committee structures and all those types of things and to get those in place and to be able to digest those and make appointments and then bring it back to the county board for confirmation, uh, all those pieces take time to uh, to get into place. Um, I'd hate to see us in a situation where we're not sure what we're doing and we're, we're kind of, you know, we we're far enough off the status quo. We're not doing that, but we're not arriving at a destination of something new and we hit the organizational meeting and we we arrive at just appointing like a vice or chair and we don't get our committee boards and commissions seated for uh, an extended period of time. So the, the sooner we hit a decision point, um, the better. Thank you. Okay, um, is there any further discussion on this motion? Let's go ahead and take a roll call. Who's who's taking minutes today? This is Cheryl. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. Go go ahead. Okay. Carrie Severson. Hi. Chad Cosgrove. Is he back? He is Chad? absent. Yeah, okay. he has left. Okay. I see you still logged in. Uh, Sean Murphy Lopez. Hi. Melissa Luck. Hi. Down seat. Aye. 
you have okay. four eyes. Okay, thank you, thank you, Ms. Dahl. Okay, so that motion carries. So we will go ahead and ask for that special meeting of the county board before the end of March. Um, so would the committee like to meet again um, to have one last chance to be able to go over the final documents and then also to review a resolution or resolutions that that could potentially go with these? I move that we meet again. Okay, motion by seat. I'll second. Second by luck. Any discussion on that? Just a quick comment. Is our plan to give the information to the county board supervisors at our next March meeting, the 15th or whatever? I was only saying maybe it? we should meet on the 14th so that uh, we'd make sure that we we knew that we wanted a special meeting um, and that we had a date, but it doesn't sound like we necessarily need to. Um, but at the same time, say we did meet on the 22nd of March, like was suggested, we will need at least five business days for the agenda to be sent out um, with a resolution. And it would be nice to have the materials for people too. So I think the sooner this committee meets again to finalize everything, I think the, it's going to make life easier on the clerk and the administrator and others. Okay. Okay, any further discussion on this committee meeting again? Okay, all those in favor of, of us meeting again, please say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries, so we will meet again. So now um, let's just go to um, agenda item. Uh, time and place, of, Mr. Chairman, what is the time and place of this next meeting of our committee? Okay, yeah, agenda item number 11, um, let's, let's figure that out right now. Um, so can folks, does, does Monday work for folks? What time, um, what time? Well, the only time I can't meet is between um, three and five because of the land conservation. Yeah, me too. Meeting. Yeah. But I can meet any, um, I believe I can meet any other time. And are we in person or virtual? I would probably prefer to be virtual again because I don't know if I'm going to totally be better by then. I, I'm just going to say something for Chad, uh, but I'm sure he can go to this meeting rather than the other. At 1.15 on Monday, we have the county campus meeting. He's on that committee. So okay. if you met in the morning, I don't know if that's good. I mean, he could probably skip that meeting and go to this one. I just want to let you know. Could we meet at 10 a.m.? So I just, I want to let you know that I work Sunday night and I work Monday night. Okay, when would you prefer to meet on, on Monday? Well, noon? Well, I would prefer probably in the morning sometime. Does 10 a.m. work okay for you? Would you prefer earlier so that you can go to bed right after? Yeah. Okay. How about uh, nine a.m. or would you rather have eight? Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Okay. Is anyone opposed to meeting at eight thirty a.m. on Monday? That works for me. I won't be able to sleep in. <laughs> no, you won't, Mr. Langrick. Does that work for you? Uh, this is a prior meeting. Meeting, so I will make it work. I think there is economic development. There's uh, northern counties and then Wisconsin counties association going on, but those are all of less priority. I will be here at this one. Okay. Um, I'll I'll have to double check. I don't know if if uh, Director Scott is on or someone from MIS to know that we have MIS support, or is this a meeting you plan on doing at the county boardroom? This would be uh, we're I'm hoping to do it on WebEx. Okay. So we would need support if. That's possible. Okay, I will coordinate for support at 830. Okay, um, and then I don't think, uh, I don't think we're going to address agenda item number 10 future agenda items unless someone pipes up. So, I guess at this point, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn to. Monday, March 14th at 830 AM via WebEx. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, 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 
point of information before I move to adjourn. Okay. Uh, uh, the COVID thing seems to be spreading again. I just discovered that three people in my household have COVID, excluding myself. Uh, I still have to be tested, so it's going around. Okay. I I feel yeah. I feel worse than I did <laughs> yesterday and the day before myself. So I should probably get tested. And we've all had the booster shot. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn to that date and time and place. So moved. Motion by Locke. Second. Second by Severson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're all in favor. Thanks for the good discussion, everyone, and and look for those documents to come to you, and we'll have a draft resolution for folks to look at, too, on Monday. Good job, and thank you, Melissa, and everyone else. All right, take care, everyone.